being born in Germany and having uh, survived the Holocaust, how does it feel if now on Berlin streets, Arabs are celebrating the attack on Israel publicly and are distributing sweets uh, to other people? I do not have a grievance against the German people. I find celebrations about what happened, which technically was a sort of criminal act, uh, as painful. It was a grave mistake to let in so many people of totally different cultural and religious and concepts because it creates a pressure group inside each country that does that. Yeah, it's like me it's like a pressure cooker. Eventually it's gonna blow. Yeah, yeah. Talk to Carlson. <laughs> I wanted to wait on that oh, one. Oh boy. Here oh, we go again. <laughs> Fire in the house. <laughs> Woof. Of all the effects of the current conflict in the Middle East, one we can be certain of at this point is that there are going to be a lot of refugees, hundreds of thousands, possibly millions. Where should they go? That's a real question. So if you were to suggest, well, why doesn't Israel take them in? It's their war. The response you would get would be immediate and it would be aggressive and it would be, of course not, that's insane. These people are dangerous. If they were moved to Israel, it would be destabilizing for that country. And that's probably true. In fact, it's certainly true. But what's interesting is the very same people who would tell you that are now pushing for those refugees to be sent to the West, to English-speaking countries, Scotland, the UK, and yes, the United States. Calls for this are coming from the left, predictably, but also from the so-called right. We should take these refugees. What's going on here? And is anyone pushing back against it? Well, Nigel Farage is the head of the UK Independence Party, joins us now with an update on where this conversation is going. Nigel, thank you so much for coming on. So it's a little strange that the very people who acknowledge that this would be a massive threat to Israel, and they're absolutely right, by the way, I'm not calling for Israel to take these refugees, but those same people are saying the UK and the US and Scotland should take them. What, what's the thinking here? I mean, we have a great history in the UK of taking refugees. You can go back 300 years to the Protestants in France who were being burnt at the stake. And we took in a large number of French Protestants, Huguenots, as they were known. And they did very, very well in commerce, finance, the military in our country. Uh, the same applies to Jewish people. We took Jews in from Russia after the pogroms at the start of the 20th century. We took Jewish people in from Germany and Austria in the 1930s. Um, and indeed, if you go to the 1970s, we took quite a large number of people from Uganda, where Idi Amin threatened to annihilate the Asian population there. And again, they were a group that came to the country, assimilated, did incredibly well. So, you know, we feel as a country with our Christian roots, uh, and our desire to help those in genuine need, uh, that we should try and help people. Uh, but remember that the duty of any government, its primary duty, is to the integrity of its own country and its citizens. Now, over the course of the last six, seven years, we've taken over half a million legal refugees. They've come to us from Hong Kong, our former colony, uh, being oppressed by the Chinese Communist Party. They've come to us from Afghanistan. They've come to us from Syria. They've come to us, of course, from Ukraine. The big problem here is that Hamas, the terrorist group Hamas, although the BBC will never call them terrorists, but the Ham you know, Hamas who launched those appalling, barbaric attacks on everything down to babies on October the 7th, they enjoy considerable support in Gaza. Indeed, the last elections that were fought in Gaza a few years ago, Hamas came top of the poll. So if you take any significant number from Gaza into our country, you will have a significant percentage of Hamas sympathizers and supporters 
among them. And you have to ask, given the protests we've seen on the streets of London just this weekend and the weekend before, whether maybe we've got enough of a problem in this country already. And I, you know, we've had successive waves of Islamic extremist terrorism on our streets. Uh, there's a case going on right at the moment uh, from somebody who was killed just a couple of weeks ago. The authorities do their best to suppress all of these stories. So my argument, and I'm pretty much alone in this, is that if we take people from Gaza, uh, they will actually pose, some of them, enough of them, will pose a threat to our national security. And if anyone should take them, Tucker, shouldn't it be the Egyptians? Shouldn't it be the Saudis? Shouldn't it be their co-religionists in that part of the world? And how interesting that Saudi Arabia didn't take a single person from Syria because they were worried of the impact it would have on Saudi society. Right. Um, and the same goes for e and the same goes for Egypt right now. So if they won't take them, why on earth should we threaten national security? But, uh, it's called common sense to me. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and and you know it, it goes back to the question. You know, it's like what do the people over there know that we don't? Mm -hmm. And what are they taking into account that we're not? Yeah, you know, our our generosity. Yeah, we can have generosity and sympathy for them, but. How far can that extend to the point where <laughs> it's too much? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're putting our own people at risk. Yeah. That's crazy. I mean, this is not a good idea, period. Period. Because we don't have, like, Donald Trump said it best, right? They're not sending their best mm -mm. in many of these cases. Right. I understand what's going on with the war and everything behind it. And we watched the video. We, now we're asking the question, was this intentional? We, know, we don't know. Um, for certain. But the stuff, the, the, they're emptying out their prisons. Mm -hmm. and, and they're sending us criminals. And it's not like they're sending lawyers and doctors only. They're not sending you know, politicians, people who's going to build this country. They're sending all kinds of... Lauren, I, th I think there's more to it than just votes. Mm-hmm. I, I think there's a bigger agenda at play here. Because, I mean, you know if they're taking in people from the Gaza Strip, you, yeah. you can almost be guaranteed Hamas is going to be sneaking people in there. Of course. Of course. Mm-hmm. Wow. Let's keep going. So it's going to be like one giant recruiting drive for Hamas. Sure, of course. <laughs> what do you think? It's common sense, yeah. Could we threaten national security? But I, I want to go back to something you said at the beginning, that the English feel good about themselves because as a Christian country, and it is still, I think, officially a Christian country, though it's obviously not, but it is technically a Christian country. They feel good because they're expressing Christian charity and receiving all these refugees. But has that policy made England better? Is it a more cohesive, happier country than it was 40 years ago? It doesn't, doesn't seem to be at all. No, I mean, you know, we have now got, uh, we have now got, and our, our London Metropolitan Police don't know what to do. We had people on the streets of London this Saturday shouting jihad. People on the streets of London carrying ISIS banners, chanting, going on on the streets of London, from Palestine to the sea, sorry, from, from, from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free, meaning Israel should be literally obliterated. So we now have the politics of other countries on our streets because of who we've let in. This group of people have not assimilated. They have not integrated. Uh, and therefore, why compound the problem? Historically, it's been a success, but in modern times, it is now dividing our society. It is threatening our way of life. It is threatening our free speech. It's happening here. I mean, look at Germany. Look at Germany. Can you believe that in Germany, of all countries in the last week, Jewish people in Berlin have had stars of David graffitied on their front doors? So you can see all over the West, this is a massive problem. 
and it's not one from which America is immune. It's interesting that no one ever. Oh my goodness! When are we gonna learn? Like, why are we so like? How did this thing go? Those who refuse to learn from history or are ever doomed do to repeat it. It seems to me we are very stubborn from the West. I think this is why this is why this 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 republic. This is how this is how we're gonna lose it. We're gonna I, lose it because we refuse to learn from history. That's our problem. Somebody said the only thing we ever learned from history is that we never learned from history. Right. Crazy. Right. <laughs> and and not only that, but I don't I don't think it's just that we're stubborn. I think it's also that people are trying to be overly compassionate uh -huh. and in doing so they leave themselves vulnerable mm, okay and it's like they don't see the world for what it is mm, yeah <laughs> it's so uh, they they it's a false perception I, I will say it's more atheistic than anything it's not even it, christian Right. And and they refuse to look at the world as a bigger picture than what their the West. narrow Western view is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think um, ben, um, Shapiro, ben Shapiro was right about this when he said we have a narcissistic view of the world. Exactly. We think the world look, is it's like us. It's like us. We think the rest of the world in all the culture and religious differences, if something is happening, right? around the world, Hamas went to Israel and did what they did. From the perspective of Westerners is that, well, they did it because maybe the system needs to be fixed, you know? Mm -hmm. They did it because, you know, you know, black people are, are, are robbing stores and carrying out flat screen TVs. Well, it's because they were oppressed. It's like this this mindset is it, like this, I don't know what you would call it, this, I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's so weird because it's, they think- It's brain soup. <laughs> his brain soup, I like it. He's like, they're really thinking that everything that evil people do, every evil doers, right? They try to find an excuse for it. Yeah, there is some kind of moral argument behind their doings. They don't accept the fact that there are evil people in the world, like that do evil things. Mm -hmm. Like they don't, they don't, they don't really believe this reality. And I think this is what's hurting us here. Especially when you come to the, uh, dare I say, MSs, mm -hmm. you know what I'm talking about? When when these things happen, they mm -hmm. don't ascribe motive to the person mm -hmm. doing the act. They yeah. do it to the tool that was used mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in in the act itself. So now they try to ban all of the tools that were used in the MS mm. from all legal owners of said MS. <laughs> it's crazy. So it's like, what does that do? That just means that those who want to perpetrate things, they're still going to find a way to get them one way or another. Mm -hmm. You're mm -hmm. not going to stop it. It's just they have to go through different channels to do so. Mm -hmm. So what are you really accomplishing? Mm. Nothing. What's breaking one law versus breaking two laws versus breaking three laws versus breaking four laws. Yeah. Like once you start going down that rabbit hole, who cares? <laughs> you know, there's no stopping it now. And I, I can't, say it on youtube mm -hmm. um yeah may catter um otherwise it gets stream shut down yeah um think of um hmm. you can type in, anyway in the but, chat. put in the chat i will think that's what but, i mean. uh yeah. yeah i mean it's just they they don't seem to stop and think mm -hmm. the only thing that stops one of these MSs is, is these bad MSs is a good guy with a pew pew. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
So, I mean, it's crazy. It's you know, it, it and they they keep trying to make the argument that no, we need to ban this, we need to ban that, we need to ban this, we need to ban that, based on <laughs> cosmetics and really different things and stuff and it's like no 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 that's that's <laughs> not going to fix the solution because nope. evil people are going to do evil things regardless of how many laws you pass and how many dictates you put out there yeah 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 citizen well, and it's in the heart of the person not and and i think you just hit the the nail in the sure place here they don't believe sin is a real thing they don't believe evil they believe evil is the result of being oppressed, right? They don't believe evil is in the heart of humanity in that sense. They think all people think like them. That's the problem. No. That's what you can say. That's what will justify it. They'll justify the drag queen. They will justify uh, the, the pedo. They will justify all of them because from their perspective, if they're doing it, they're doing it for a reason that we mm -hmm. might not understand. So therefore, we need to educate ourselves and get on get on, get on board with the notion yeah. of what's going on instead of the fact that hey man these are evil doers <laughs> no you don't have to condemn the people because christ died for the sins of the world we get that but you do have to know for certain that there are people in the world who just do crazy things because they have wicked hearts it's simple mm -hmm. as that. okay it's just true because it's a denial of the gospel too. No wonder why people don't. And, and let, let let's not forget, there's still a manifesto out there that hasn't been released mm -hmm. by a certain someone. Yeah. That you know, the Christian school. Yeah. Well, they were a Christian school. We don't need that manifesto. And but I'm not only that, but he was also uh, trans. Mm -hmm. So you know that mm -hmm. manifesto is just gone to the wind. No, no, you'll never get to see that one. <laughs> but the, the the white guy who did the, the new the new the Buffalo one, yeah, the recent MS, yep. he's now the his manifesto is already out. He's yep. all the white supremacist, and he they were trying to connect him to the MAGA movement, mm -hmm. like the media always does. And I think we like talking about people who are separating the world, confusing the world. Like the media is is the worst, man. I'm you notice that it's a perfect example the word. <laughs> how the one that oh, happened man. with a trans person, hey. they mm -hmm. hide the manifesto. They mm -hmm. try to play the sympathy card for that one. But yeah. the one up in Buffalo, they try to turn into this MAGA racist, miserable person and just a yeah. horrible person that mm -hmm. is absolutely the worst person in the world. Release the manifesto the next day, you know. It's like, come yeah. on, people, really? Like, let, and you wonder why mainstream media is dying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, we see through the lies. We see through the BS. It's crazy, man. It's crazy. Wow. I tell you, boy. I'll tell you. Mm. Says, well, China's got the fastest growing economy in the world. They have an obligation to take in millions of refugees from other countries. Nobody ever says that. Nobody says that about the Gulf states. It's only Christian countries that have this obligation. <laughs> okay. And oh. <laughs> China just, China destroyed those. That's because if China took in the refugees, they'd all end up in a camp and start <laughs> being harvested for body parts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Actually, that's 100% correct. Can, can <laughs> we say the like, like number one exports when it comes to selling uh, organ donors and so on? And can they were saying Uyghurs. Yeah. Uh, yeah. True. And they were doing it to their own, uh, yeah, to their own uh, prisoners. This was a very common thing. You woke up and you know, oh, my kidney's gone. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, <laughs> hello. <laughs> that's why. That's why they don't want to go to China. <laughs> no, 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 no. They don't play that game. <laughs> they yeah. do not mess around. So no, I mean, you know, I'm sure China would love to have them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. Like, Infinite source of revenue. Yes, oh, please. Yeah, sure. <laughs> That's why they have the largest booming economy. Oh, yeah, no wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my Lord. That's a good point. He destroyed those countries. Germany. I mean, people are getting raped in Germany on the street long before this, the Hamas attacks of October 7th. This is a long standing problem. So, but why do you think that is? Why do you think that prosperous Christian countries in the West have this obligation that? 
every other country, India, China, Saudi, they're all exempt from it. What, what is that? Yeah, and I mean, take Japan, you know, Japan, a Japan. fully functioning modern democracy. Uh, but Japan, of course, takes hardly anybody. In fact, even on legal immigration, Japan right. is very strict and very tight because they want to protect the integrity of their culture and their country. Why? Um, partly guilt. I think the, the older countries seem to be absolutely infused with guilt about their colonial past. Uh, but also, wait a second. Japan is, was one of the most aggressive colonial powers I know. in history. I, and but I, I they know, don't. They I don't. Know, know. But but no one's pushing them. Why? I mean, I mean, I'm not a conspiracy nut, but it does seem like this is an effort to destroy certain kinds of countries. And it, of course, it's yeah, worked. Yeah, yeah. Why not just say that? We have allowed the virus of Marxism to take hold in our countries. We're being told to be ashamed of our histories. We're being told that we're institutionally racist. We're being told that we suffer, you know, from, from, from our own form of bias. Um, and we indoctrinate our school kids with this stuff. And the reason this neo-Marxist agenda has taken such hold in Britain, Europe, and indeed in much of America too, is actually not because of the left, it's because the conservatives I've noticed. in those countries have not had the courage to stand up to this stuff. And, you know, you look at my country. Well, We're being told we should, we should be ashamed of slavery. Do you know, well, we spent nearly 50 years. Go ahead. <laughs> He's on fire right now. For evil to flourish, it takes. Uh, how, how's this? I'm trying to think of the uh, The only thing necessary for evil to flourish is for good men to do nothing. Exactly. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's that's exactly the point he just made. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, and I see it every day. And that's why we're here doing what we do. Oh, yeah. We're having this discussion not because it's uh, politically correct. And for those of you who don't know, guys, We've been fully demonetized from YouTube because of discussion like this, which I don't really. I'm not gonna stop talking. I think when we stop talking, that's when we lose. Um, I will try to tone it down, but a little bit more wisdom. We try to use word like MS. You know, we try to keep away from the cursing and stuff like that. And I try not to find videos that has stuff like that in it, but sometimes it shocks me. You know. But this is what YouTube sent me a couple of days ago. So on October 30th, 5, 8, 5.44 in the morning. Uh, so the channel has been fully demonetized. So that means we we get nothing from ad revenue, um, not a single thing. I can't even put my T-shirts and all that on the screens anymore to even cut that out. Um, so I'm just saying, you want to stay with us. Uh, best way to do this is to go on our Patreon. I think I have it here. Um, also on Rumble. Yeah, Rumble is another good way as well. So if you go to our Patreon, we have a few members there. Um, so if you go on Patreon, you can support us that way because YouTube is um, shadow banning, shutting us down and telling me to be quiet and stuff like that. And They don't like anything that is not in line with their narrative and they also they don't like the name Jesus at all. So it does seem like that. They never said the reason why. They just felt like things didn't align with their supposed view and policies and so on. That's how they do. Which is changes, which is changing consistently. I don't even know what it is anyway. Whew, that's crazy. Let's go back then. Of slavery. Do you know, we spent nearly 50 years <laughs> using the Royal Navy. Thank you, Darth Vader. <laughs> at massive cost stamping out slavery, right. stopping the rest of Europe carrying out slavery. Yep. But nobody ever comes up with those arguments. Conservative cowardice through politics and media has led to so very much of this. Well, Britain but ended the, the transatlantic slave trade. So, the so, moment of awakening is coming. Well, so your own prime minister, who is a conservative, but obviously has zero interest in the country that he supposedly runs, uh, for example, uh, that's very obvious as an American looking across, um, his his new priority is ending tobacco use in a country with a massive narcotics problem <laughs> and a massive refugee problem and a, an economy based on what banking or something that's falling apart 
Why is he focused on tobacco? I'm confused. Do not for one moment, please make the mistake of thinking the party that is now in power in my country and has been there for 13 years has anything to do with being conservative. I've They're noticed. not. Right. We, have the highest we have the highest tax burden we've had since 1951 when we were busy paying off wartime debts. We have the growth of a surveillance society that punishes the innocent and never the genuinely guilty. We have legislation to control our lives at every level. We've just put up corporation tax by 30% uh, to damage every, every man and woman running a small business that wanted to reinvest and grow in this country. And despite Brexit, we still have not lifted the regulatory burden, which of course supports the big corporates, but damages the entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And for Sunak, one year on from an election, to decide his main priorities would have stopped anybody after 2009 buying cigarettes, whilst we have a massive, massive problem with drugs causing huge short-term damage to our youngsters. Oh, and the other thing is to fiddle around with the A-levels that 18-year-olds do. Neither of those two things would have been on the top 25 priorities of almost anybody in our country. And that's why we're headed next year in this country for a dramatic, dramatic, collapse of conservative support in the general election. And you know what? Not only will they lose the election, they deserve to lose it. Yeah, I mean, I, I would support someone from the hard left who actually cared about England over Sunak, who clearly despises the country that he runs. But I just want to zero in on this question of tobacco. So well, you, it's impossible to imagine him saying cannabis use has massive side effects. It's not helping our country at all. And we're going to phase it out. That would be inconceivable. But tobacco use, which has long term bad health consequences, true, but also raises testosterone levels. That's the threat. Like, how is that the threat? No, I mean, it's absolutely wide of the market. Yeah, you're right. Tobacco causes long term potential problems, but it doesn't actually cause short term problems. Drugs cause psychological short term problems. Uh, absolutely deleterious to our younger generation. Yeah. But he sidestepped the big issue went for what he thought was the easy one. And look, you know, everywhere we see the growth of big oh, government, big government. There's a saying mm -hmm. that in, in reference to uh, drug use, the mind that alters, alters all. <laughs> Long term or short terms? <laughs> Regardless of yeah. short, long term or short term, if you start messing around with drugs, if you alter your mind state, you're going to mess with your chemical imbalance and it's going to cause issues for a long time with how you perceive and see the world and view your worldview, especially if you're under 25, because yeah. the human brain isn't fully developed before the age of 25. Yeah. Yeah. So this is why, like, people are pushing for, like, legalizing cannabis use. Okay, that's all well and good, but mm -hmm. those under 25 using cannabis, it's still going to affect how their brain develops. Absolutely. You know, and it's going to make dumb down an entire generation of kids. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, there's a text in Peter. There was this, there's a way he speaks about it. Um, he says, I'm going to find it. Don't worry. It's in my head. So if it's in my head, it's somewhere. Um, and if anybody wants, I put the link to Patreon in, in the chat. And that, you can just click on that and it'll send you directly to Patreon. Thank you. Yeah, Patreon is much better than Rumble. So uh, it's... Let me put it on the screen for you quickly. All right, it is... First Peter 2, I beseech you strangers as pilgrim. All right, listen to this. Abstain from all fleshy lusts which war against the soul. You can put mm -hmm. God in this list. You can put anything, right? Yeah. If, it's, if it's waging against your spirit, your humanity, your soul. By the way, the word soul here doesn't mean this separate entity. In scripture, the word soul is used as your person, your character, your humanity. Even your, your very 
core of your being. Yeah, very, your very being sometimes is used for the word soul. So I'm glad you mentioned that. So the fleshy lust here is anything that satisfies the flesh. So anything that appeals to our carnal nature, it tells you to abstain from it. Stay away from anything. So that could be drugs, alcohol, porn. Porn, porn. yeah. Because why? It was against the soul. So keep away from it. That's that's Bible for you if that has any value. That's kind of the verse I go with when it comes to some of this stuff. Anyway, amen. Amen that wants to control every aspect of our yeah. lives. And it's all irrelevant. You know, our national debt, I mean, our debt interest payment is massive, just as it is in the USA. Uh, our entrepreneurship is falling. Uh, our levels of national security through failed immigration leave us more vulnerable to internal terrorist attack than ever before. Uh, I mean, it's, it's almost unbelievable that banning cigarettes for anybody born after 2009 could even be seen to be a priority. <laughs> Countries that hate themselves have trouble continuing, I would say. And I, I hope that both of ours change course. Nigel Farage, I so appreciate talking to you. Yeah, man. I mean, it's not that difficult for me to understand. I mean, these folks are out of their minds. It, it shouldn't be hard for anybody to understand. And like, it's a very simple concept. Yeah. But unfortunately, people are so wrapped up in self-indulgent that they don't care. Yeah. And that has dire consequences. And we haven't seen nothing yet. We have not. You know, I, um, Darth Vader, I'm sure you use. Have you ever heard the term mixed multitude in the Bible? Mm -hmm. The mixed multitude? All right. I, I want to share something with you guys. What we done? Uh, some of you might know this and some of you might not. You know, when Israel... And when they were trying to come out of Egypt, well, they came out of Egypt and they went through the wilderness, making their journey to the promised land. Do you remember the issues that they were having? They were having complaining issues. Mm -hmm. They wanted to go back. There was lack of faith. Um, they began to war against Moses and all these different issues, right? They're running out of food, out of water. Yeah. Would you like to know why this was happening? I got news for you. Now, there were many reasons. One of the main reasons, right? Scholars have said this, and I got a book here I'm going to quote from. Um, and when you read it from the Bible, you're going to realize what this was about. It was something called, it was a group of people known as the mixed multitudes. Look them up. Type mixed multitude in your Bible. You'll find out who they are. In Exodus 12, verse 20, 38, this is what these people did. So they were coming out of Egypt. As they were coming out, they were Egyptians. They weren't just Egyptians. They were people from Arab Arabian countries, by the way, there it is. Mixed multitude, a group of foreigners who have not become Israelites. So they were living in Egypt, working in Egypt, but they were not slaves themselves. They were free. However, when Egypt was, uh, when when Israelites were leaving the Egyptian country after the ten, after this, yeah, the ten plagues, and you know, the angel of death came, and it was like, okay, get out, we're done. Pharaoh was had enough. He lost his son and everything else. So as they were leaving, these people said, we're coming with you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so these were the mixed multitude. Here is the amazing thing. They were not believers, though. They right. were afraid. They said, we're leaving because we hate the plagues. We're leaving because we, are, we want to join hands with you guys. We want to journey with you guys. We're However, sick of this stuff. We're out. We're bouncing. Yeah, yeah, we, we, yeah, we, we, we are sick of this. We're going to leave. But as they were leaving, look at this. The group of people, they were Arabia, the country, or mixed multitude. It's good to study this. But here is the thing I'm reading now. There is a book. I'm quoting from a book. I have it in my library. It's called um, Patriots and Prophets. It's right. It's right there. Patriots and Prophets. There it is. All right. So I'm quoting. Listen to this. This is what the author says. The author says the first great apostasy of the Exodus movement was at the Mount Sinai. And here is your verse. Exodus 32, verse 1 to 6. This apostasy took place while Moses was up in the Mount and originated what? With the mixed multitude. Mm -hmm. While Moses was absent, it was a time of waiting and, sus uh, and suspense to Israel. During this period of time, there was time for them to meditate upon the law of God, which they had heard, and to prepare and to prepare their hearts to receive the further revelation that he might, he might make to them. 
they had none too much time. They had none too much time for this work. Had they been thus seeking a clearer understanding of God's requirement and humbling their hearts before him, they would have been shielded from temptation. But they did not do this. They soon became careless, um, inattentive, and lawless. Especially was this the case with the mixed multitude. Now, you got to understand this. Moses is trying to get the law from God. Here are they at the bottom of Sinai. Instead of meditating on God's words, the mixed multitude begin to go around the crowd, um, insinuating doubts, insinuating that, what are we doing here? So in deceit. Sowing deceit and discord among the people. This was what brought about the Mount Sinai rebellion. Now, if you're those of you who don't know what that was about, many people lost their lives. They were impatient to be on their way to the promised land and flowing with milk and honey. There were some who suggested a return to Egypt and whether forward to Canaan or backward to Egypt. And the masses of the people were determined to wait no longer for Moses. Feeling their hopelessness in the absence of their leader, they returned to the old superstitions. So they went back to worship the same old gods of Egypt that they were once delivered from. And the mixed multitude, again, that name he showed up, had been the first, I want you to hear this, the mixed multitude had been the first to indulge murmurings and impatience. And they were the leaders in the apostasies that followed. This is what scholars have determined. Now, here is my point. Here is my point. You see that mixing we're doing in our culture? It has dire consequences. The Israelite picked up on this later on because when they got to the book of Nehemiah, you know what they did? When Nehemiah found the book of the law, he began to read it. Guess what they did with the mixed multitude? Now it came to pass when they had heard the law, they separated Israel, all the mixed multitude. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, at first, this was a great idea. Oh, let's take them all in. Guys, let's go on a journey. We live in Egypt. Let's take our friends and family, even though they don't believe in the same God as we do. So as they were on that journey, came to realize they were not becoming Christian. They were not becoming Israelites. No, they remain in their unbelief and apostasies. They were still worshiping their false gods. And now it brings about serious issues in the culture. And now when they got to Nehemiah, they're like, no, no, no. Let's separate from the mixed multitude because these people are confusing our goals and principles, constitution, ideologies, our relationship with the Lord. And they wanted to separate. And I'm telling you something. It's going to come a time. If we don't learn this soon, we're going to learn it someday. That mixing is going to bring about serious confusion in this country. And uh, when that's the same girl, one, yeah. one bad apple spoils a whole bunch. <laughs> Simple as that, right? We're going to look back and say, man, what in the world did we do? Thank you.